Good morning students. Today we are going to learn a new lesson of science lesson number 15 that is air around us. So students before me you have learnt in the chapter 9 that how the air is important or how the air is required for all the living things. But the question over here is students have you ever seen air? No, you might not have seen air. But students, you surely must have felt its presence in a various ways or in a many ways. Now here we'll see the different examples how you have noticed the presence of air. Now students, you notice it when the leaves of the trees rustle on the or the clothes hanging on a clothes line sway. The students, pages of an open book begin fluttering when the fan is switched on. So here the role is of air. Why the pages of the book's open book is fluttering? Due to the fan which is giving or which is providing air due to this thing. Now the moving air makes it possible for you to fly your kite. Yes. The kite which you, which you are flying in the sky, there also there is a presence of air and this helps the kite to fly on the sky. Now students, do you remember activity 3 in chapter 5? In which you separated sand and sawdust by winnowing. Now students, what is the meaning of winnowing? Now, winnowing is the method of separation. Now, here we are going to take a best example of winnowing that is the process of removing lighter particles from heavier particles by wind or blowing is known as winnowing. So, students, what is the Meaning or what is the process of winnowing? It's first of all, it is a separation. Winnowing means separation. So, separation of what? From lighter, removing of lighter particles from heavier one. Means the particles which are lighter, they will going to remove by the heavier particle. By And through, through which they will going to remove? Through the presence of? Through the presence of wind or blowing, through the wind or blowing, that thing is known as the winnowing. Now, winnowing separates the grain from the husk because here the husk is the light particle and whereas the grain is the heavy particle. So, example is removing of husk from grain. Winnowing means separation. Now, have you ever played with a firki? So, students, please observe the diagram of firki in 15.1 diagram. There is the presence of different types of firki. Now, we are going to learn about the activity 1. So, let us make a firki of our own. Following the instructions shown in figure 15.2, place it in a different directions in an open area. Move it a little back and forth. Observe what happens. Does the firki rotate? What makes a firki rotate? So students, now firki, how you have to place it? There are the different diagrams of Firki given in the 15.1. So, what you have to do in this activity? Hold the stick of the Firki and you have to place it in a different directions where there is an open area. And what you have to do? Move it a little back and forth. And now, what will going to happen? That the Firki will going to rotate. Now, why this Firki is rotating? Why? Because there is the moving air. Isn't it? Have you seen a weathercock? See students, there is a diagram 
15 the figure 15.3 of a weather cook it shows the direction in which the air is moving at that place so students this weather cock will going to show the direction that in which the air is moving so air is moving in the right direction it will show its direction in the right side and in the same if the air is moving or the presence in the left side it will show its direction in the left side so students will go more further now 15.1 is air present everywhere around us yes students air is present everywhere yes now we'll going to see that, that how air is present everywhere now close your fist students close your fist what do you have in it students anything is there in your fist no nothing now please try the following activity to find out so students now you have to try that what is present in your fist by applying this activity too now take an empty open bottle is it really empty or does it have something inside turn it upside down is something inside it now now students please give a look to the diagram 15.4 now this experiments are done with an empty bottle there are the two pots which are present and they are filled with the bottle sorry the buckets are present and they, these buckets are filled with the water and you have to insert a empty bottle into this two different buckets now what you have to observe now observe the bottle does water enter the bottle so students what you have to observe over here that you are as is as soon as you dipping the bottle whether the water is entering in the bottle or not now what you have to do for this entry of water in the bottle now tilt the bottle slightly what you have to do you have to tilt the bottle in a very slight manner does the water now enter the bottle now student you have to notice that as you have tilted the bottle the water is entering in the bottle now or not okay now what you have observed over here you have seen bubbles coming out of the bottle so students as soon as you have tilted the bottle what happens over there you are trying to fill the bottle with the water but as you have tilted you have seen bubbles coming out of the bottle or you may you may hearing any bubbly sound so why students you are hearing this kind of sound or why the bubbles are entering now can you guess what was in the bottle so students please guess it what might be in the bottle what is present in that bottle so yes it's it is air that was present in the bottle so students the bottle was not empty air was occupied in it in fact it was filled completely with air even when you turned it upside down that is why you notice that water does not enter the bottle when it is pushed in an inverted pos position as there was no space for air to escape when the bottle was tilted the air was able to come out in the form of bubbles and water filled up the empty space that the air has occupied so students what you have noticed in this activity that the bottles were not empty they were filled with air and as soon as you have inverted position you have placed a bottle in inverted position there might be bubbles has took place over there or bubbly sound was present over there now what this bubbly sound was there that the water was not getting the entry in the bottle due to the presence of air and this air has escape from the bottle as soon as you have 
took the inverted position of the bottle and this air escaped from the bottle in the form of bubbles and then only the water got the entry in the bottle okay now what this activity shows you that this activity shows that air occupies space okay students air also need a space now the empty bottles there was a mixture of air it was filled with the air as we know that air is present around us and students air do not have any kind of color and one can see through it it is transparent air is a transparent now as soon as uh, as we know our earth is surrounded by a thin layer of air students as we know that uh, our mother earth is surrounded by a layer of air now this layer extends up to many kilometers above the surface of the earth and is called as atmosphere the students what happened now as soon as this layers will going to extend up beside the many kilometers above the surface of the earth so above the surface of the earth this air will going to extend so what it will going to call what will it be it will be the atmosphere now as we move higher in the atmosphere the air gets rarer now please there is the diagram they have given the figure 15.5 that how the mountainers carry oxygen cylinders with them now can you think mountainers carry oxygen cylinders with them while climbing mountains what is air made up of so students now we're going to learn that what is air made up of so which components are present in the air and how it is made up of until the 18th century people thought that air was just one substance so students until 18th century means till the 18th century people thought that air was just a kind of substance now after the experiments have proved that it is really not so so students until 18th century air was considered only a substance but after conducting a various experiments and these experiments have proved that it is not a substance so what is the air air is a mixture of many gases so students air is not a substance it is a mixture of many gases So, students, what kind of mixture is it? Now, let us find out about some of the major components of this mixture one by one. So, students, now we are going to learn about the various mixtures or the various components of this mixture by step by step. Water vapor. We have learned earlier. that air contains water vapor we also saw that when air comes in a contact with a cool surface it condenses and drops of water appears on the cooled surface the presence of water vapor in air is important for the water cycle in nature so students what you have learned over here that air contains water vapor so the one component which air contains that is the water vapor and how you have seen this water vapor when air comes contact with a cool surface it's what it does it condenses and after conden condensation of drops of water appear on the cooled surface so what this shows it shows the presence of water vapor in air is important for the water cycle in nature now next oxygen now we will going to learn about the presence of oxygen in the activity 3 activity 
in the presence of your teacher. So students in your presence of your teacher what you have to do? Fix two small candles of the same length on a table. Light both the candles. Cover one of the candle with an inverted glass tumbler. Observe both the candles carefully. Do both the candles continue to burn or go off? You must have observed that the candle covered with a glass tumbler got extinguished after some time, whereas the other candle continued burning. What can be the reason for this? Think about it. So students, under your teacher guidance, what you have to do? You have to place a two candles of the same length on a table. And after that, you have to light both the candles. And one candle you have to cover with an inverted glass tumbler. And after that, you have to observe both the candles in a very careful manner. So, what you have observed over here? Yes, you must have observed that the candle covered with a glass tumbler got extinguished after some time. So, what is the meaning of this? That the candle which was covered with a glass tumbler, it will get after some time, it will stop burning. Now, why? Where but where the candle which was not covered, it will keep on burning. Now, what is the reason about it? Please think and tell. Yes. It seems that the candle get extinguished because the component inside of the glass tumbler which supports burning is limited. So, student, what we have observed over here, the component which is present in the glass tumbler which supports the burning, is what it, it was in a very limited form. Okay. Now, most of the components is used up by the burning candle. So, students, in the glass tumbler, the component which was helping for the burning, it was very in a limited form. And the candle in the glass tumbler has used all the components for burning. However, the other candle is con getting continued supply of air. This component of air which supports burning is known as oxygen. So students, what you have concluded from this activity or what the result you have got by observing these two candles? That burning also needs air because burning of burning needs air why because air is air has a mixture of gases and for burning we need a oxygen and as we are knowing that the candle which was covered with with a glass tumbler it was not having a huge amount of a component present in a glass tumbler that's why it stops burning and as we know the burning also needs air because in the in the air there is the presence of oxygen and the candle which was not covered it was getting a sufficient amount of oxygen that's why it keeps on burning okay now we'll see the next component of the air that is the nitrogen now, in activity 3, did you observe that air is still present in the glass bottle even after the candle blew out? This indicates that the presence of some of the component in the air which does not support burning, the major part of air not the major part of air which does not support burning candle is nitrogen. So students, here we have learned about the nitrogen that the nitrogen is not supporting for the burning of candle. Okay, 
it does not support burning of candle and here we have seen as the air is a mixture of different gases nitrogen is also one of the major gases which is present in the air and this nitrogen was what where it was it was present in the glass bottle okay that's why this nitrogen has not supported to blew the candle okay it doesn't support the burning candle to burn